fish right there, guys. There's one right there. Oh, it's a donkey. It's a big fat green bean bag, guys. Big fat green bean bag. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Right on the edge of the shore. Oh my goodness gracious, guys. That's a giant. If you want the gills, we got the skills right here at 302 Fishing. Good morning, guys. Welcome back to the channel here. If you're brand new, you're still hanging around and you haven't already done so, smash that subscribe button, click that notification bell. Give us a big fat thumbs up if you like this episode. Help us out in the suggested videos. And of course, drop a comment below. Let's get into this, guys. <laughs> I have literally been sitting on this bait for months. Some people have a love relationship. Some people have a hate relationship with this particular bait. But we're going to give our honest review and we're going to try to come out here and see what this thing is all about. Will it help us? Does it suck? I don't know. But I'm curious to see if these fish are willing to hit up on this bait. You guys have seen us right here in this hidden gem right here. Fish chatter baits all the time and we do catch some doozies right out of here. So I'm sure you guys already know where I'm going with this. If you're a familiar with the channel or you're familiar with the bait that's out there right now but we are coming out with the Guggen Squad clickbait guys that's the bait we're gonna to try to be using a little moving bait uh, they're gonna to try to catch these fish on I've got two colors I got chartreuse and white and the other one is black and blue that's all we're gonna fish with today uh, and hopefully we catch one of those big fat green bean bags on the end of the line so I'm gonna give myself about maybe about an hour or two and see if we can catch anything on either of these colors right now uh, if we don't, I do have alternative baits. This is a very good uh, lipless crankbait uh, pond. And as well, we can use some soft plastics if we have to get that desperate and try to get fish on the end of the line and using a slow moving bait. But give me a couple of seconds. Let me go ahead and tie one of these colors on. Let's start casting around, guys. And again, hopefully for lucky, we get one of those big fat green bean bags right out of this pond. As we mentioned earlier in the intro here, we've got our two different color baits right here. We've got our chartreuse and white. We've got our black and blue Guggen Squad clickbait. Slim pickings at Dick's, guys. Unfortunately, we've got uh, two different weights right here. We've got a half an ounce and a three-eighths of an ounce. Again, that should not be a problem to us right here. Again, the fish don't care what the weight is, man. It's only a matter how far we can cast uh, which each one of these weights that we have right here. Uh, again, it's a hybrid vibrating jig that we have right here. It's very unique vibration of flash, very distinctive clickbait clack. Again, when uh, these metal pieces start clanging against each other, especially against the uh, blade and the wire itself that these things are made of. The retrieve is very, very simple. Just like uh, your chatterbait, you throw it out there and you choose the cadence that you want to bring these back uh, in towards you. Uh, I usually use maybe a medium or even a slow roll. Uh, that usually gets the best response, but these things are supposed to be resembling fleeing fish on the move. That looks like a bluegill, and this potentially looks like a shad uh, that's out in the water. And we do have both of these species in this body of water that we're going to right now. Again, bass being predatory, they're going to react to anything that's around them. As I said, the clacking blade is going to trigger strikes because, again, they feel that vibration through the water, and it's going to come right through their lateral lines. And again, hopefully to turn around, swoop, and, and just gobble this thing up. If you notice right here, we'll pull it out and show you a little bit later on. we got three rattling beads here. Again, that bang up against this blade to kind of give this thing that the clacking noise that we're talking about. If you want the max action off of these baits right here, do not use a paddle tail because the paddle tail will make this bait rise. So from the reviews I'm seeing, if you use a bare naked or with a paddle tail, it comes up way up in the water column and you do not want that. So the recommended thing to do is to put a straight tail trail on her. So today we're going to have a six inch fluke that we're going to put on the end of these two right here. The skirts are all hand tied guys. The recommendation uh, for gear that you're going to be using right here, most of the times they're going to recommend you using a medium heavy rod. You can use this with bait casting reels and of course spinning reels, obviously using the proper ratio that you feel comfortable with or you're able to afford. Line, 12 to 20 pounds, either floor or mono you can use on this and all you braided fans, it's 30 to 50 pounds. So let's go ahead and get this thing tied on the end of the line right here. We'll start casting around, give us that two hours that we're talking about. And uh, let's see if we can get these buggers uh, to swallow up one of these baits right here. I decided to go with the chartreuse and white. Uh, the water clarity is fairly decent here, so they should have no problem seeing uh, that bait at all. Cheapy little fluke, guys. That's all it is right here. It's going to go to the end of that. All right, so I'm excited right now. I, I, I want to really get this bait to work here. This is the chartreuse and white uh, clickbait that we're going to be using right now by Guggen Squad. 
pretty good looking bait right now. You can see that I've got the fluke on the end of there. You can see how wild that tail is moving, just me barely moving it. We've got our chartreuse and white skirt there. And of course, there's those metal uh, balls that I was telling you about that clock up against that bait. They give you that vibration and that noise that these bass are gonna feel and hopefully trigger them to eat this big old bait. I'm equally excited too because I was gifted a rub that I really have not officially announced here on our channel. Uh, this is the Veritas PLX. It's a six foot ten, fast, medium, heavy rod, and uh, I'm already loving this thing, guys. It's about half the weight and half the size, but supposedly it's supposed to be way stronger than my original Veritas that I have it's sitting in the car right now. Like again, we're just going to do one rod, one reel, one bait right now. But uh, we're going to start casting this thing around here in a couple seconds. I mentioned to you in the last episode that I would not recommend putting a stinger on the zinger itself. Uh, that was a tongue twister right there. <laughs> but on this one right here, because again, remember, we had a paddle tail that was on the end of the other bait, and the paddle kept getting caught up into the actual uh, hook that we put on here for the trailer. So. This one right here with the fork tail, it's got no problems moving all around. It's not gonna get bound up by that trailer hook. So give me a couple seconds, I'm gonna pull out what I have, we're gonna show it to you. And again, I always love red, so we got red hooks, so it looks like the fish is actually kind of bleeding. In my mind, that's the way I think the fish see it, and hopefully it gives it a little bit extra trigger other than everything else that's right in front of you right here. I went with what I could find, guys. So here's what we're going to be using right now. This is the Gamagatsu. It's a 3 aught trailer SP uh, for, again, spinner baits, chatter baits, whatever the case may be. Because, again, with these fish kind of almost short striking sometimes, you want to make sure you have that extra added comfort of making sure that fish stays on the end of the line. And that's what that extra secondary hook will do. I always choose red, man, because it's just my thing. Again, huge debate. Does red work? Doesn't. I think they do, so that's why we're going to put it on the end here. So give me a couple seconds. Let me pop that on there, and we're going to start casting around, man. Let's see what happens. All right, so here's our uh, clickbait right here. Again, everything's all ready to go. Here's our stinger. as uh, a piece of plastic that's right on the end of the loop right here, and you're going to try to get as close to dead center as you can uh, on uh, that uh, stinger hook. And once these are on here, they're usually pretty good. They will not come off. It's going to take a while to get this episode started. Uh, I did get my uh, late start here because uh, I do work in the evening. I work two jobs on Friday. And uh, by the time I get home, it's probably almost 3 o'clock. Of course, you're jacked up because you're still you know, pumped up from working. So it takes me about another half an hour to get to bed. So 3.30, and then I got the alarm ringing at 8 o'clock in the morning thinking I'm going to get up at that time. But it generally doesn't work that way. But uh, it takes me uh, about an hour or so to get roused up. But uh, we are near lunchtime, so we're going to have a little bit of a quiet time. I always allude to that. So I'm going to be patient and try to work through this uh, quiet time. Uh, one thing I did see here uh, in the reviews is you have to be careful about all the junk that gets all over the, uh, the bladed bait here because, again, once this gets the algae right here or on these balls right here, uh, it's not going to come through uh, the water properly. you got to make sure it stays clear all the time. And as well, I heard it doesn't come through grass very well. But, again, we're in an open pond, so hopefully uh, we won't have that problem. Uh, again, we do have uh, plenty of algae that's right here, so we're going to try to stay reasonably offshore right here because, again, the root system on these shrubs come way out, like maybe 10 to maybe, I don't know, 24 inches of uh, root systems that come out of here. And uh, you can get caught up. I've got about $100 worth of baits down in the corner over there uh, on that stick. It's underneath uh, the water there that I uh, infam infamously lose all of my baits on. One day I'm going to go out there if the water goes low enough and retrieve those baits and get them back. But <laughs> the water's a little too high right now. But again, just watching that tip to make sure it's uh, got that vibration going on. I'm digging the overcast day, so that's uh, kind of a plus right now. <laughs> I'm still uh, out of my mind here. I mean, you guys literally lit up the, the one episode I had right there. That giant, giant snakehead that I caught, man. That was an absolutely insane looking fish. Uh, <laughs> I sent that to my dad, man. He He's always about the big bass, but he's never seen any, anything like that, man. And he was, he was about floored when he saw that. But it was a very exciting catch to get, man. It's one of those rare catches you get, and you kind of cherish those, even though it may not be a bass, man, but uh, that's a wild memory to have. My hope is as uh, this bait is coming in, we're probably gonna hit it right off of this drop-off right here. 
You can see how slow I'm reeling this reel. I'm trying to keep it right just above the surface of the bottom of the uh, pond here. See how the uh, line's not bobbling uh, like it should be? But that's because we've got junk on the end here. That's what I was trying to tell you, where it gets bound up and it stops that vibration action. All right, we need a hookup, come on. Something's gotta be lurking out there. That was definitely a fish on the end of the line, guys. Dang it. <laughs> I thought I was hooked up on something, but, but there was something on there, definitely. Throw a couple more casts. We'll walk our way down over to that opening right there. We'll start bombing out uh, into that area. Again, I know we're gonna try to pick up something over there, man. Something's willing to react to this bait, I'm sure. Not seen any more surfacing when I first got here. There was plenty of it. But again, positive vibes down the end of the line. That's what I'm gonna emanate here. Hopefully that uh, positivity will bring some reactivity. <laughs> Yeah, definitely seen some some drawbacks on this, guys. Right here. That's all it takes. See that tiny little bit? If you can't shake that off, man, bring the cast in. <laughs> Our fans coming back in here. Check us out here. They've been uh, losing their minds before I started this episode up. But... Uh, Got some mating pairs that are already over there. Got the hens that are laying down with their eggs and whatnot. And the males are just going crazy trying to get on the females. There's a hit right there, guys. There's a hit. All right. <laughs> All right, our first. Oh, my goodness gracious. Did you see that? Wow. <laughs> it was a dink, guys, but we had them right on the end of the line there. Oh, my goodness gracious. <laughs> All right, so now we at least know that they will hit on the clickbait. Dang it. That was right along the shoreline. So that might hold promise of these bass being along that shallow area back in that cove if we go there later on uh, in the episode. So mad I missed that fish. <laughs> Almost to our next locale. Our little dogs aren't out. Homeowner's inside. Doesn't look like he's home because his truck's not there. Water's definitely going down, I can tell that. You can see all the uh, dark mud that's there. So that's kind of good. I want to keep receding out so we can get that shoreline back again. It's always good when that shoreline is out there. But I'll bet you there's bass right up underneath all this junk. <laughs> but we got to figure out how to get a clickbait across it. And I'm trying to find some secure area. I'm trying to find where branches and logs are at. Kind of use them as a base to stand on. Because when you stand on that mud straight up, you tend to sink down there. So it's kind of, think of like a snowshoe. How you're distributing your weight a little bit. It's kind of the same effect when you're standing on these sticks. But let's get some giant bombs out here. And uh, see if we can get something that's coming in right as we bring it through this algae bed right here. Or close to the algae bed, I'm sorry. Let's shift to the other side of this bush over here.
Okay, and see the sticks right here? That's what I'm gonna stand on. There go the frogs. And hear them in the background. Oh man, I just saw a fish come right out from nowhere, guys. He went up underneath the bait. Holy crap. <laughs> Didn't seem like a big one, but it was definitely a fish. Change my angle over here a little bit. These geese are not going to make it easy for me, man, with all the chatter and noise that they're making over here. Look at them fighting over there. A lot of testosterone flowing around. Oh, look at that. Did you see that, guys? Huge, huge bass just popped up out of there. Easy three-pounder in there. Holy crap. Wow. <laughs> that was crazy, man. Let's see if we can get him to hit that thing again, man. He just barely tapped the back end of that bait. We'll have to come back at him again if he does not uh, strike after these last couple of casts we're going to throw right now. I told you there's stuff up underneath this algae. <laughs> That's why I don't want to go stomping in there, man. So if we don't get a bite and everything, we can at least drop uh, some uh, soft plastics in these little gaps. We'll throw one more cast right along here, see if he'll come back at it. If he doesn't, we'll move along. Let him rest. But that was a nice looking bass. So far, we had that fish that came off, as I mentioned, and we had that big old bass almost come up and engulf this thing right here. Uh, I, I had to gather at least three pound bass uh, that was getting ready to strike that bait. But uh, we're gonna keep fighting it out. I did come here at lunchtime. We are now at two o'clock, so that's two hours on this bait right now. And then uh, once we finish this section, man, we got to change it up, man. See if colors make a difference again, like the last time on that zinger. I am so glad, like I said, they mowed this down, man, because this would suck. You can see how high the grass is. There is an opening here. We're going to try to find where it's at. And then we're going to go right in this part right here. There's actually a trail that goes back into that cove. But I kind of want to cast this shoreline right out here and out in this open area first. But we got to find out where that spot is that I can get into. Oh, check it out. I almost stomped on it, but right here, that's a deer skull sitting right there. See it? I'm not going to touch it because you never know what's on there, but uh, somebody perished here. Mother Nature bringing them back in. All right, where am I going to go? It looks like I can get into this area right here. I just got to get my tip in here for my rod because it looks like it's just only reeds right there. I don't know how deep this water is. It looks pretty dark, so. <laughs> but uh, let's get uh, down in here to see how much uh, depth we got going on here. Again, holding on to dear life on these uh, trees here. A lot of sword arm action is going to be going on over here in a minute. I'm trying to get over here into this little opening. Can I just hope some of these efforts are worth it. Yeah, we got a good well over foot and a half over here. Let's see if we can get a couple casts over here. Hopefully I can. Hopefully this rod's not too long. There's a 
fish right there, guys. There's one right there. Oh, it's a donkey. It's a big fat green bean bag, guys. Big fat green bean bag. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Right on the edge of the shore. Oh my goodness gracious, guys. That's a giant. It's a giant. Don't shake it, don't shake it, don't shake it. Don't shake it. Don't shake it. Come on. Stay there, stay there. Oh yes. <laughs> there it is, guys. A giant donkey right there. That might be a six pounder right there. All right, we gotta weasel our way out because I forgot my scale, guys. Wowie wow. <laughs> the clickbait gets a savage beast. Oh, the bait came right out, guys. It's right on my shoulder, right here. See it? <laughs> wow, that thing just straight savaged that bait. We gotta hurry up and get over there. But guys, that's that's gotta be a six pounder. Easily. Holy jeez. <laughs> wow. We're gonna quickly try to get to my car and get a weight on this and get it back in the water. All right, right back to the water here. We got our big fat donkey right here. That big fat green bean bag. We're gonna aerate it up a little bit and then we'll get a uh, weight on it. She's good, guys. All right, big fat mama, guys. Look at that nonsense on the end of the scale there. <laughs> All right, I kind of over embellished. If 4.82 was the heaviest so far, almost a five pound bass off of the Guggen Squad clickbait, chartreuse and white with the trailer hook because that's what he was hooked on. But again, if you want to look at the bait, I have the black and blue one in my pocket because I had to leave the rod over there. But here it is. That's the clickbait that we were using right there. But let's get our fish aerated up and get her on her way, man, because uh, she deserves another day. Holy crap, guys. That was ridiculous. <laughs> I knew it as soon as it hit it, man. It bent that rod right over, guys. But that was a serious, serious fish. See how the fins are doing? Yep, she's waving. Come on, baby. There she goes. <laughs> Boom. I don't know. I'd say about five million casts I made today. <laughs> I put it all my effort out here, man. I mean, it was a true grind out there just to get something going on the end of the line. Uh, the Oster went out last weekend, and I know when he's having a problem catching fish, then it's truly a problem here in Delaware. I mean, it's just the weather's been erratic. It's been up and down. For Pete's sakes, it, it was flurries on Wednesday. That was three days ago, and that's almost 70 degrees today in Delaware. Come on, man. But these fish don't know what to do again right now because we've not seen any bass on bed. We've not seen the bluegills come up on their beds as of yet, but I've seen the minnows starting to come up and everything else like that. But uh, the oakster was out there last weekend. He, he barely got a bag going on. A poor co-angler he had didn't catch anything. And uh, he got lucky. He got third place. So, oh, congratulations on uh, your, your placing there in the top three of that tournament that you had. But uh, we got out there with the Guggen. Uh, clickbait there, that Guggen Squad clickbait. And uh, we tossed and tossed and tossed. I mean, the winner right now was Chartreuse White. Uh, right there, we took, it must have been at least two hours before we even got one response. That was that first one we got. And I had it all the way up right to in front of you, and then it just fell right off. <laughs> And then, of course, when we went over to the homeowner's house where that one swooped up, and it literally swooped, and you didn't see it because I had my glasses on. It swooped, stopped dead, looked at me, and then bolted off because he was right behind the, the bait right here, man. He had it, but I, I guess I spooked him. But, hey, we got down in that cove, way down in the back there that I've never fished on, and I made that little curveball right around that limb, and one or two cranks, man, I had it on there, guys, and I had to keep that pressure on. Again, that's why it's important, guys. You have to have the right equipment out there when you're fishing with your baits and everything else. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, I told you about that stinger. I put that on there because if I did not put that on there, we would not have an episode. <laughs> but we were able to get that big, fat green bean bag right on the end of the line, man. I was super excited. I thought I had a six-pounder. Of course, I over-embellished as I always do. But... Almost five pounds, 4.82 pounds. That largemouth bass, that lunker, that donkey. Uh, hopefully you guys would have enjoyed that. But this is the only bait that got fish on the end. That black and blue, 
nothing doing, nothing touched that bait. And this is also an excellent lipless crankbait uh, pond right here. I even threw the sexy shad out there, lipless crankbait, the Guggen clutch right there. Again, nothing. But I should have taken my clue when we had the omen of all the birds, those seagulls flying above, man. They're basically giving me the Dave Chappelle wrap it up. And um, I kind of took the hint, guys. <laughs> so I've got the heck out of here, and that's why we're out here filming the outro. Uh, pros, guys, I really like the action on this. It kind of gives almost a similar action as your uh, chatter baits. I've never used the jack camera, so I'll have to test that out and bring that out one time. It's expensive lure, but I'm trying to bait when I want to spend that much on it. Uh, again, a bladed bait. But um, again, it gets got a great action. Uh, the vibration is pretty good. You can see it right on the end of the rod right there. Uh, again, I like the fact that you could put a stinger on here when you put, again, a straight tailed uh, swim bait on the end of it. Again, make sure it's not paddle tail because you'll get all bound up and again, it's gonna rise up in the water. That is the one bad thing, the con. Uh, the second bad thing that I found out about this bait is when I was casting along the shorelines, I was quickly with these beads right here and of course right there where your uh, uh, eyelid is at where you tie your line on, once you get algae on here, especially right here, it didn't take as much as a fingernail to get right on air of algae and it stopped that blade, dead stop, and it was not traveling through the water properly. Again, even when it was on that beach. So that is the only two cons I have on it. But again, I'm gonna give this bait the benefit of the doubt, man. Again, we always have great success with chatter baits and I really think this one can put some good fish on the line. We just have to tailor uh, the way we uh, retrieve this bait right here. I think I'm gonna futz around with the blade a bit, just bend it and see if we can try to get it to travel down a little further into the water column right there. Uh, so this thing will be able to slow roll on the bottom because that's kind of what I wanted to do today. But again, it wasn't happening. So that's why I was cranking really, really slow with my cadence. But guys, uh, again, this was the hero right here. Black Blue didn't do it. Crankbait didn't do it. So we're gonna get back out there again. We're gonna keep fishing. We're hoping again, this uh, spawn starts back up maybe in a week or two. I don't know, but we, we've been trying really hard, but at least we got one of those big fish on the end of the line today. Cause it's been a while since we got uh, a big fat green bean bag on the end of our line there. It was a good tug, but I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Give us a big fat thumbs up right there, guys. Push that little thumb right there, man. Help us out on the algorithm right there. Punch that subscribe button, guys. Click that notification bell. Share this video out right now, guys. I hope you have an excellent weekend. Hopefully, you're catching your big fat donkeys out there, guys. And as always, fish on.